One of the strangest discoveries we've had with Resident Evil 8 is just how much the game seems to depend on the camera's position. We know that if we move it even a little bit, we catch a glimpse of our headless protagonist, Ethan. And while Ethan being headless is a design choice rather than a bug, the same can't be said about the enemies and other objects in the game that are affected by the camera's position. Lady Dimitrescu loses her legs when the camera is disjointed, making her all the more terrifying. And speaking of disjointedness, that's exactly what happens to her three daughters when the camera is moved. Their outfits and legs just go all over the place. But the thing most affected by the camera is the terrain. At first glance, nothing seems wrong. And well, that's because there isn't anything wrong. The world holds fast and keeps itself together under the almighty power of the disjointed camera. Until we leave it behind and enter a loading zone. After which the fabric of reality bends, and suddenly it looks as if what we're playing is Resident Evil Village Chaos Edition. In this broken world, walls mean nothing and we're free to explore to our heart's content. And if there's one thing in the game that's locked down by walls, it's the machine Chris gifts us to battle Heisenberg. Taking this machine elsewhere sounds like a dream come true, right? Well, let's do just that. So driving around and gunning down Heisenberg with his machine gun cart on wheels was a nice addition to Resident Evil Village. I mean, it's awkward, but I grew up playing vehicle-based shooters, so I felt right at home. And speaking of slick shooters, I want to thank this video's sponsor, Mecarina, for supporting our growing horror channel and all the weird things we cover here. In Mecarina, it's essentially 5 vs 5 tactical mech warfare that's easy to pick up, fun to play, but has deep complexities perfect for skilled player vs player combat. If you like blowing stuff up in giant robots, this game will be right up your alley. I love launching myself into the air and then raining down fire from above. There's a ton of different mechs to battle with, upgrade, and tweak with a huge arsenal of weapons. Customize your mech to fit your playstyle, and jump into different game modes like 5 vs 5, control point capture, 2 vs 2 death matches, tournaments, and more. You can also fly solo or join up with your friends, and even customize matches to make the perfect fight. Mech Arena also has tons of events each month ranging from competitions and tournaments to new content drops. The game doesn't launch worldwide until August, but if you're in the UK, Canada, US, or another lucky country, you can start battling right now for free on iOS and Android. Use my link in the description below or scan my QR code on screen now to get one gold crate, 15,000 credits, and 200 A coins to get a head start before anyone else. So suit up, grab your guns, and blast your way across the battlefield. And a big thanks to Mech Arena for sponsoring this video and supporting our growing YouTube channel. Okay, so Heisenberg's factory. Time to steal ourselves a machine and get out of bounds. We start at the bottom floor of the factory. Right away we can see just how much thought and care the developers put into animating this machine, as it slides around without any moving parts like a kid playing with a toy. Obviously, this makes sense, because we never see this angle in the game. Leaving the camera behind as we board the elevator, the bending of reality begins. The arena is the first thing to go. We mentioned walls not playing too much of a part in this warped world, and that holds true, as we can slide away over to these cliffs, which lie behind what would be the confines of the boss arena. Down here is where the bridge should be, connecting this factory area to the altar in the village. While there's no bridge, we still have a means of getting over there by sliding around the outskirts of the map. It really looks like this machine shouldn't be able to traverse this terrain, but, well, it very much can. Although, some spots are traps, and falling into them means getting stuck. Okay, so I guess we've time traveled too. So far into the future that the outside vegetation has overgrown into the factory. Yet, the production lines are somehow still going. This is really bizarre. Why is a factory suddenly above ground anyways? Since we already have bending reality and time travel on the table, we might as well add flying, because there are areas where the traversable terrain extends far beyond the graphics for the ground. Anyways, now that we made it to the other side, something becomes apparent. So much of the map has been corrupted that even if we were to make it all the way to, say, the village, it wouldn't load in. Dreams of getting this machine down to the village and blasting some monsters shattered, let's backtrack a bit and see if we can get some of that unloaded stuff in the immediate area to load in. Once on the elevator again, if we recall the camera around the halfway point, a little more of the map will be loaded in when we reach the top. Of note are the weather and its lightning textures, these orbs of orange light that represent the light coming from the village, and our pal Heisenberg, floating far above the map, ready to come crashing down this party the moment we leave the elevator. Despite everything going on, it's largely the same fight. He'll go through his motions, all the while spitting out his terrible lines like a broken record. And on the topic of broken, we mentioned before that enemies will act strange when the camera is disjointed. Heisenberg is no exception, as he continuously assaults the spots where the camera was deployed, completely ignoring Ethan no matter how many bolts are fired. Running into Heisenberg lets us push him, though he will eventually break free and move back to attacking the previous location. Trying to fight him out of bounds doesn't amount to much, as once he initiates his attack that tosses Ethan from the machine, we get pulled into an endless loop. When we are not out of bounds, Heisenberg still tosses Ethan from the machine, and the cinematic finish to the battle plays out the same. Heisenberg is reduced to a pile of rubble, and we stand with our non-existent head held high in triumph. 
If you're wondering why Miranda isn't showing up and one-shotting Ethan at this moment, it's because the cutscene trigger is among the lengthy list of things busted on this map. We're left to wander a broken world, unable to do anything but hit the restart button on the main menu, which resurrects Heisenberg and starts the battle anew. And that brings our odd adventure to a close. We ride our broken machine out into the void and carry on to our next video. So be sure to subscribe now for more, and I'll see you all real soon on Horoscoped. Cheers.